Hello and welcome to an early endurance race, a race you can do pretty early in this game. Now let's take a look at these cars because I want to emphasize the grip of this particular car. Look at the other ones. All the grip is lower. Let's go look at that Beamer. Even that one. See, so look at the difference there. That difference is just enough. If you got the skills and maybe know a couple of tricks, you can keep this baby full throttle around this track, but man, it's not easy. Now we're gonna go through several different strategies. By the way, this is my Irish car. I've got some St. Patrick's Day vinyls on it and a nice Irish green. I like this car. First things first, I use steering assist high on this track and sensitivity zero. Helps me to have more speed in the corners, but what am I doing? I'm going the wrong way. Yes, I'm doing that on purpose. I am going to be using clock management technique. This is not an endless endurance race, it's just a really long one. So, with clock management technique, you really need to be mindful of your timer at all times. You need to know how much time you get for each lap, how much bonus time, how much bonus time do you get for each car, and how do we maximize that? So what I'm doing here, I figured out how far back I could go, 43 seconds, and then if I drive this just right, I will run out of time and just catch up to the bots as I'm coasting because they're going to slow down for the corners because they're horrible. The first oh, 12 bots you get are really bad. So this looks scary, right? No cars and I'm running out of time, but you just keep watching. I've uh, figured this out pretty close. I probably could have pushed it a little bit further. There we go. I'm on fumes basically and still yeah, you don't want to push it much further than I did. Believe it or not, going backwards one more second is too much. You will not catch the bots. So now, I don't just stay full throttle, although I'd like to. It takes about a full lap to get right up to maximum speed. In this car, that's about 297. So because he's in the way, I might have to get out of the throttle. Oh boy, well, he was definitely in my way. Um, it's really hard to take the corners in this car full throttle, but you can do it if no one's in your way. Now, I'll touch more on assists a little bit later. For now, my strategy is going to come into play very quickly. Like, you're going to see this timer refill fast. Oh, look at that. They, were, they ended up getting stuck high. One thing to know about the bots is that, for the most part, they're going to get out of your way if you have the line. The only way that they won't is at the entrance of a corner. That's where they get a little bit stupid. Honestly, they get confused. By the way, here I'm purposely trying to time this. I wasted a little bit, but I get you get 20 seconds every single lap. 20 bonus seconds. You get 10 bonus seconds every time you pass a car. So you got that's why I wanted that timer to be right around 60 as I was passing him and crossing the start finish line. And so you just got to be mindful of it. Like I'm always watching my timer. So I see there's a car in front of me. I'm at 73. Um, I don't want to be over 70 when I'm crossing the start finish line, but I don't want to just I don't want to just slam on the brakes and stop. That's just silly. So for a handful of laps here, I'm going to be slowing down and waiting. So I'll get into some other stuff here right away. So like you've noticed I'm fully upgraded. And if you were missing some of the, the top speed requirements for this car, that might actually make it a bit easier. But for now, let's get into the costs of this car. So if you want to purchase this car, it's 125 gold, 100 gold with the discount, almost 1000 R to fully upgrade it and 213 gold. And this car appears in a lot of series. So there's the Pro-Am series, uh, two of them. Then we go over to Pro. There's two more series in Pro that this car appears in. And then it even appears in an Expert series. So that's five series that this car appears in, which means if you don't own this car, you can't get 100% in any of those series. So you're going to own this car. It's just a matter of if you want to actually fully upgrade it or not. And like I was saying, if you missed one of the top speed, that might not actually slow you down too much overall because, uh, let's see, watch right here. You see, I'm just on the cusp of hitting 297. And if I don't get this trajectory just right, see, I started my turn too early. Oh boy, I tried to keep it out of the wall. Hitting a wall like that 
wouldn't have actually slowed me down if you hit with your back end, but, well, sorry, it definitely would have slowed me down. What I'm trying to say is, if you hit a wall really hard with your back end, it won't damage you. So if you get heavy damage, that slows you down for the rest of the race, and that's horrible. But usually that only happens if you really smack your front end. You can get away with a lot of side contact and rear contact, but front contact, no. So I don't mind passing this guy. I will not pass this other guy. I've got an extra 10 seconds. So I've just got to save him up. At a certain point, I'm going to be going full throttle and staying that way. Okay, so I told you I was going to say more about assists later on. So you know that I drive no assists all the time. Most of you guys know that if you've uh, you watched my videos. I'm a big advocate of it, that it, it definitely makes you faster. But I never want people to feel bad for using assists. I used all assists for my first 18 months playing this game, and I mean heavy assists, like uh, steering assist high, brake assist low, traction control on, and tilt A steering. So I know what it's like to go through all those adjustments because I made them. And tilt A on a track like this is horrible because just a couple of corners ago there, I was heading towards the wall and my back end was stepping out. With tilt A, it would have been impossible for me to avoid the wall because when you start to skid with tilt A, your options are full gas or full brakes. Well, that's gonna guarantee that you hit the wall. With tilt B, you see that right there? I lifted off the throttle, I regained control. I didn't even have to hit the brakes. That's the massive advantage of tilt B. The downside of tilt B is it can be tiring because you're always pressing the screen, but that's the way it is. So. Getting right back to it. Why am I running steering assist high here? Steering assist high helps to take some of the little twitchy movements out of your steering. And it has a tiny bit of traction control built into it. And I mean really tiny. So eventually I do start getting this full throttle corner and you'll notice that I lose a little bit of speed sometimes. And that's because I'm just starting to slide, but it keeps me in line. And then I have to drop my steering sensitivity to zero because steering assist increases your sensitivity. It makes it a little more twitchy. And so I have to drop my steering sensitivity to make up for that. So some of you guys have know I've said this in the past. If you're used to steering assist and you wanna take it off, go and reduce, increase your sensitivity by three. So if you run steering assist high and sensitivity five, and you want to try no assist driving, like no steering assist driving, put your steering assist up to eight and try that out. When I first went no assist, I was running on 10. Man, I don't know how I did that. Oh, I just can't drive that way now. Okay, so you see my timer. I didn't fill it up this time going past the line. So I need to keep it full throttle now. I probably hit the point at around 25, 30 kilometers uh, you get to the point where you stay full throttle and you just don't really lift. Now, see my back end just starting to step out a little bit and I lost a bit of speed? There you go. So here I am, 296. Um, it'll just clip 297 as I drive into a corner. Now, this time I'm going to have to lift just a little bit. Watch. You see that? I lifted for just a fraction of a second. That's all you need to do. A really, really short lift. That's going to let you turn around the bot and he's gonna give me the lane, see that? He darted over to the left. Now, that's at the exit of a corner, and that's when they get out of your way. At the entrance of a corner, for some reason, you're on the outside, the bots will decide you're actually on the inside, and they swing out to hit you. They just get confused for some reason. I'm guessing it's about sectors as we're heading into a corner. So, I'm at a certain sector, and the bot gets told, okay, he's on the inside. Well, I'm not on the inside, but that's what the program wing was interpreting me as. I don't like it, but this is way better than it used to be, guys. It used to be if you had the outside lane heading into a corner, the bot would smash you into the wall. And I mean, totally destroy you. And some of you older guys know that, that they would just totally smash you. Now, if I, have that lane pretty solid even if I have just a bumper on the inside of a bot he'll give it up like uh let's see watch what happens here with this guy totally he stayed to the left didn't even try to get over to me so 
this is already pretty far. Oh boy, that's touchy. It's really hard. Um, you've got to start your turn at just the right time. You only got about a car length or so to start the turn and you need the right trajectory. Driving out of the corner, you actually have to drive like you're going to hit the wall. See, look, look where I am. And then I keep a slow arc to stay off it. Now watch this, 297. Come on, let's hold it, hold it, hold it. 296, 295, 294. So you can see that it had a little bit. I was skidding just a little bit, but that traction, that um, steering assist high enabled me to keep on going. So I've only got probably a couple more laps. This one will be dicey. I'm going to try this. No, I better go. Oh boy, this is going to be risky. I definitely have to get out of the throttle because, uh, oh, look at that. Wrong trajectory. Ah, oh, nuts. That's a horrible place for this to be happening. And man, I got dangerously close to that wall. But you're going to see me go over 50 kilometers, which is a pretty big deal. Um, certainly couldn't go farther in other cars like... Oh, my favorite car on this track is the McLaren P1 GTR. And way back in the old days, you could drive forever here if you had the skills. Uh, it was pretty hard. Even still, right now, there is a Nissan that you can drive forever if you want to. I'll put a link up at the end here. It's a really fun race, but it pays horribly. <laughs> but same with this one. Honestly, this doesn't pay that great. But this is early. This is Pro-Am. And you guys might like the earnings that you're going to see. Just so you know, I'll say it again when we get there, but I didn't hire the manager or the agent. And it's not a bonus fame day and it's not a bonus R day. These are just normal earnings. Here you go, over 50 kilometers. We're gonna speed this up right away because it's really slow as he's coasting. So right now we're going two and a half times normal speed. And I'm just coasting on the coast as far as I can. You wanna be on the extreme inside because it doesn't matter whether you're taking the outside line or the inside line, it counts the same distance, even though that's not realistic. But here, watch this. I had to do that. But it's going to save you time to be on the inside lane. Again, I didn't hire the agent or the manager. It's not bonus fame or bonus R days. These are just the core earnings. If you like this, please like, please subscribe. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll keep more videos coming your way.